The film begins with a young guy named Du Il Chong. He's the son of a famous gambler called Jugui, who has passed away. But Du Il Kong has inherited his dad's gambling skills. Even though he's still a student, he's really good at figuring out what his opponents are up to in their gambling. Not only can he tell what cards his opponents have, but he can also watch how they move and figure out a pattern. That helps him guess which cards would make his opponents weaker. Because of his talent, he's known as Tad Jha. He often plays gambling games at Bong's place, and sometimes gives Bong a share of his winnings because he usually wins. But one day, while he was celebrating a win, a woman he doesn't know came up to him. Even though they're complete strangers, she somehow knew he was Tad Jha, and she invited him to dinner. So even though he was surprised, he agreed to go with her. Turns out, Il Pool is quite famous all over Korea because of his gambling skills. But instead of being impressed, the woman asked him to quit gambling. She explained that even though he might win at the beginning, eventually, he'll always end up losing, and he could lose everything. This made Il Chul curious about who this woman was. However, she had to leave suddenly because a car came to pick her up. When he got back to his boarding house, Il Chul got a big surprise because his mother had come to visit. His mom runs a small food stall on the outskirts of Seoul. She brought him dinner because she knew he was going to take the probationary civil servant test soon. She had come all the way to Seoul just to see him, but this made Il Chul feel guilty. He realized that he was his mother's only hope to improve their family's situation, especially after his father passed away without leaving any inheritance. So it's understandable that his mother wanted him to become a civil servant. To make his mom happy, Il Chul kept going to college like usual. But he had a problem because he couldn't focus on his studies. His mind was stuck on gambling and also on the woman he met the other day. She appeared out of nowhere and disappeared just as quickly, and Il Chul didn't even know her name. This made it really hard for him to concentrate, and things got even worse when he saw a car speeding towards a T-junction. At that time, he tried to avoid it, but he ended up bumping into the car's door. The owner of the car got out and told Il Chul he had to pay for the damage. Hearing that, Il Chul didn't back down and agreed to pay for it. But it turned out that the car owner was looking for a challenge, and he wanted to gamble with Il Chul. What Il Chul didn't know was that this guy was a friend of the mysterious woman who had caught his attention. The gambling involved not only Il Chul's damaged bicycle, but also the dented car door. The loser would have to replace it with a new one. The mysterious woman named Madonna became the dealer for the gambling game. At first, Il Chul thought the game would be quick and he would win easily, but the man in front of him turned out to be a tough opponent. Even though people usually saw Il Chul as a skilled gambler, he felt helpless because he got a bad hand. In the first round, he lost badly. However, he didn't want to give up, especially since he owed Bong a favor and needed to continue playing. Bong had actually advised him to quit, but Il Chul didn't want to listen because now there was a chance to go on a date with Madonna. Madonna, on the other hand, had asked Il Chul to stop, warning him that his opponent was not just an ordinary gambler. But like Bong's earlier suggestion, Il Chul didn't pay attention because he was determined to win. Sadly, luck wasn't on Il Chul's side that day. He lost just as badly in the second round as he did in the first. Eventually, he got into a fight with some tough guys who beat him up pretty badly. His life hung in the balance until someone found out about the beating and came to rescue him. This person was called Atku or One Eye, and he revealed that he owed Il Chul's father a favor, so he would pay off all of Il Chul's debts to Bong, which added up to about $100,000. Hearing that, Il Chul was confused because he had never known his father's friends before, but he didn't think about it too much because his body was hurting badly. The next day, Il Chul asked Atku again about his connection to his father, but Atku didn't want to go into too much detail. Instead, he shared stories about Jugui's greatness with other legendary gamblers. At first, Il Chul thought Atku might be one of these legendary gamblers, and he really wanted to learn from him if that was the case. However, Akku confessed that he was just a pretender. He advised Il Chul to be more cautious because in the world of deception, there are always ways to take money from others. One of those victims was Il Chul, who had been unknowingly made poor by Bong. Akku suggested that Il Chul should stop gambling, at least for now, to avoid more losses. But Il Chul didn't want to listen. He believed he had natural talent and wanted to prove it to Akku, so they both headed to the casino. There he showed Atku his gambling skills, and it turned out that Atku had been waiting for Il Chul's unique talent. 
he would secretly prepare a team for a special project. Besides Il Chul Akku, had his eye on a few other people for his plan. The first person was Kuchi, who was also known as the dealer because of his impressive card shuffling skills. Then there was Young Mi, who worked as a waitress at the casino and secretly took small amounts of money from customers. Since he took it bit by bit, nobody noticed the losses caused by Young Mi, and she ended up with a lot of money. Lastly, there was Mr. Kwan, a tavern owner skilled in working with bookies. At that time, Akku gathered these four people, including Il Chul, in an empty warehouse. At first, Kuchi felt that this team was useless, especially because they didn't know each other. But then Akku explained his plan. It turns out that he wanted to drain the wealth of a rich person named Mool. He was a cunning landlord who had recently started gambling. However, they had to be careful in spending all of his wealth. So this was the role of the team prepared by Akku. Later on, Kuchi and Young Mi would pretend to be a married couple interested in buying land from Mool. But to lower Mool's self-esteem, they had to annoy him, because if he got annoyed, it would be easier to get him to the gambling table. Then, just like an old trick, Young Mi and Kuchi would let Mool appear as the winner in the beginning. But when Mool wanted to celebrate his victory, Kachi and Young Mi switched the playing cards, giving Mool a bad hand. This was the moment Mool's luck turned. He, who had been so confident before, ended up losing many times. This strategy continued the next day when Young Mi and Kachi visited Mool's office to cancel their land buying plans. They even purposely called Mool a loser, which made him very angry. So Mool decided to find a skilled gambler, and this is where Il Chol and Mr. Kwan got involved. Mr. Kwan pretended to be a businessman with a talented nephew in gambling. Without hesitation, Mool recruited Il Chol as his gambling partner. The very next night, Mool challenged Young Mi and Kachi once again. There, Young Mi and Kachi used their old tricks again. They let Mool appear as the winner at the beginning to boost his confidence. Mool was convinced he couldn't lose this time, but in reality, he was being cheated once more. When he tried to claim the betting money, Kachi revealed his cards, which were actually of higher value than Mool's. In the end, Mool could only regret his losses. At that time, Mr. Kwan wanted to say goodbye to Mool but Mool insisted on playing more to beat Kachi. At first, Mr. Kwan wanted to talk more, but then a car arrived, and Mool hurried to greet the person in the car, calling in his boss. When the person got out of the car, Il Chul, who was also there, was shocked to see that it was Madonna. Il Chul didn't expect Madonna to be working with Mool. He couldn't stop thinking about her. He had thought Madonna had disappeared, but here she was again today. It turned out that Mool owed Madonna money for an investment, Mool confessed that he had promised to use the money to build a building, but instead, he used it for gambling, and the building was never constructed because the money had run out. So Il Chul tried to convince Madonna that Mool was a fraud and urged her to take back all the money from him. Currently, Il Kool and his friends were draining Mool's wealth. However, Madonna was confused by that information. She didn't understand why he bothered telling her. After all, if Mool was indeed a fraud, she would be the only one harmed. In that moment, Il Chul realized that he actually had feelings for her. Furthermore, her presence in the gambling world today was intended to make Il Chul reveal the Ak Ku team's secrets. Eventually, when Mool understood that he had been deceived, he ordered all his men to capture Kachi and Yang Mi. There, Mr. Kwan tried to help them, but because Mool's men were strong, Kachi told Yang Mi to go meet Mr. Kwan to save herself. At the same time, Kachi decided to sacrifice himself so that Mool's men wouldn't go after the other Akku team members. Il Chul's life was also at risk, but luckily, Akku arrived just in time. He rescued Il Chul and took him away from Mool. The following day, Il Chul woke up at Akku's headquarters, but there was one member missing, and it was Kachi, who had been captured. This led the team to suspect Il Chul of betrayal, even to the extent of sacrificing one of their own members. At that moment, Il Chul didn't defend himself and questioned why Akku wanted to save him. He learned that Akku had once betrayed Jugui, and Il Chul's father had lost his life to a cruel gambler named Magui. Knowing that enraged Il Chul and without saying goodbye, he left. The next day, Madan and Mool planned to get revenge on Il Pool and his friends. But realizing that Akku was still involved, Madonna decided to seek help from Magui to eliminate them all. Since that incident, Il Chul returned to gambling houses and consistently defeated other gamblers. His skills were remarkable, causing people to avoid gambling with him. However, one afternoon, someone unexpected wanted to meet him, and it turned out to be Kachi. 
Iltul was shocked, thinking that Kachi had died. But Kachi brought even more surprising news that Akku had been killed by Magui. This fueled Iltul's anger, and he now intended to seek revenge for Akku, as he realized that Magui also had a grudge against Akku. So it didn't take long for Iltul to meet with Mr. Kwan. He asked for advice on how to deal with Magui. However, Mr. Kwan didn't provide any advice. He simply told that this is the way of life for gamblers. If Il Chul didn't stop soon, Mr. Kwan warned that once he had completed his revenge, it should be the last time he enters the world of gambling. The following day, Il Chul confronted Magui, who had teamed up with Madonna and Mool. At that time, Il Chul brought a bag filled with money as a bet, but turns out, it wasn't just money cause it was his life. The rule was simple, so whoever lost or was caught cheating wouldn't be spared. That night, when Il Chul intended to rest, Madonna approached him. She invited Il Chul to work together to outsmart Magui and win all the money. However, Il Chul had learned his lesson and didn't trust her anymore. He didn't want to be deceived again. However, Madonna assured him that he didn't need to trust her, only the amount of money they could win. In the end, Il Chul agreed to let Madonna plan a strategy with him because he had also teamed up with Mool. At first, Madonna was surprised, but that's how things usually worked in the gambling world. When faced with a formidable opponent, players often joined forces to defeat them. At that time, Il Chul was actually relying on some old tricks, but he needed Mool and Madonna to help carry out his plan. At first, they played at a gambling table with four players. They knew that Magui was only focused on defeating Il Chul, so he kept a close eye on him. During this time, Mool also tried to distract Magui, so he wouldn't notice that Madonna had secretly switched his cards. When Magui believed he had won the card game, it turned out that Il Chul had a better hand. Magui felt like he had been cheated, but he couldn't prove it and had to accept defeat. Besides that, Madonna had a bad history with Magui and wanted to see him defeated. After the gambling was over, according to the agreement, Il Chul was supposed to take $2 million, while Mool would get $4 million. However, because Mool was greedy, he planned to take Il Chul's $2 million as well. But Il Chul was no less clever. Before this, he had teamed up with Mool's subordinates, who held a grudge against their boss because of how badly he treated them. In the end, it was Mool's own men who turned against him and caused his downfall. On the other hand, the following day, Kachi and Yang Mi, who were actually a married couple, found $1 million in their car. Mr. Kwan also received a sum of money from an unknown sender, and they all recognized it was a gift from Il Chul when they saw Jack's card in the bag. Meanwhile, Il Chul began a new life living with his mother. He fulfilled her wish by becoming a civil servant. At that time, he had completely left gambling behind cause he went to have a simple and joyful life with his mother. The film ends. The moral lesson from the film is life's like a card game, and sometimes it's best to fold and walk away especially if your opponent is your mom with a broomstick. So, choose your battles wisely and keep your mother's wrath at bay.